All right, hello, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger here, the founder of foodrising.org, the editor of nationalnews.com, executive director of the Consumer Wellness Center nonprofit. And um, I'm here to show you some of what goes on behind the scenes when we are building 3D printable objects. So uh, to do that, I have a, a blank screen here in uh, SolidWorks, which uh, is the software that I use. And I just want to show you a few, a few simple things. Um, let's make sure we've got the grid snap on. Yep, this, this all looks good. So if we wanted to build, let's say, an adapter to connect a garden hose to a mason jar, um, that's what I'm going to demonstrate here. I'm going to show you how to do that. We go to our top plane, and uh, we know that the mason jar, I'm going to use rough dimensions for this, although we could use exact dimensions, but... Um, Oops. I'm going to use a diameter here of, uh, I believe, 24 is about what we want for mason jar. Actually, I'm going to check that. Oh, no, that's wrong. Looks like it's about uh, 44. So we're going to make a 44 millimeter uh, circle. That's the, the radius is 44. And then we're going to make another circle that is, uh, I don't know, let's call it, let's call it 48. So we have right here, we have a, um, we have a, a thin structure. And then I'm going to extrude that structure on the z-axis to about uh, 24 millimeters. And so this gives us roughly a, um, the shape of the lid that's going to screw on to the mason jar. Now what we have to do is we have to build threads for this and this is where things start to get kinda kinda tricky. Uh, so we're gonna go back to the top plane we're gonna make a, a thread circle which will also be uh, roughly the same oops the same diameter. I'm gonna make that 44 I believe. Yeah that's what we chose. And um, label this. This is our thread circle you can't see uh, some of the menu commands off screen, but those really aren't necessary. Now I'm going to create a, a helix, and I'm going to define the pitch of this helix. I happen to know that a, a six millimeter pitch is what is necessary for a thread helix of a mason jar because I've, I've measured that out. So I'm going to go ahead and create this six millimeter pitch. As you can see right here, it says six millimeters, and I can reduce the revolutions down to five or four, whatever I need. There, four looks. Oh, maybe maybe five. Um, eh, four looks fine actually. And I'm going to create that helix. Now, in order to make th the actual threads, we need to build a a triangle. That is the shape of the threads. So we're going to go down here and we're going to uh, create a triangle. That is roughly the shape of, of the threads and I happen to know that for a um, let's see for a mason jar the threads are about three millimeters in diameter which means we want to go up about 1.5 and we want to I'll adjust these later We want to go out only about um, 1.8. Oops. Wrong. <laughs> Minus 42.2. That gives us a 1.8 on that. And our Y on the top hole is going to be... Actually, we're just going to go about um, 3.5 here. And we're going to do this at about 0.5. And we may go back and fine tune this later, but we're going to call this, this is the uh, mason jar thread. Now then we're going to um, extrude or, or actually sweep this thread shape across this helix. And uh, when we do that, we're, we're adding on the threads, as you can see, 
now we have the threads inside the jar lid. Now you'll notice uh, we we've got some threads that are hanging out below, too far below. So the easy way to deal with that is you're going to create um, a new plane here by dragging from the parallel top plane. And let's say I want a four millimeter plane there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move our original thread circle. Come on, <laughs> waiting for the software here. Uh, we're going to move the thread circle to that plane. There. And then I'm going to um, actually edit the thread triangle itself and I'm going to change the the Y position of that to be up four. And then once we do that you'll see that we no longer have threads below. We've got some threads sticking out the top. But what we can do on that, there's, there's a number of ways to deal with that. We can, for example, we can reduce the revolutions of the thread itself to 3.5 and you notice it's now right inside the object. So what we have here so far is um, a cylinder that will screw onto the top of a mason jar. Now suppose uh, we want to now have something that, um, well we were building what, a garden hose adapter to a mason jar. So what we want to do at this point is we want to take uh, a front plane sketch and we're going to build a, a, a funnel, a, um, oops, a cone that will uh, work with the garden hose. Now we know that the garden hose um, diameter is about 12.2 for the female garden hose receiving threads. So we're going to put something here. We're going to go out here and we're going to do, I don't know, I don't know if you like this angle or not, but we'll call it a good angle. And uh, we're going to connect these along the bottom here so we have a triangle. And then finally, we're going to sketch a center line in this sketch here. And then we're going to take this triangle and we're going to do, um, oh, oops, we're going to do a revolved extrusion of the uh, triangle around the center line. So now what we have here is we've just built a solid, a solid cone on top of the threads underneath by again rotating this triangle all the way around this center line, uh, which is it's called a, a revolved extrusion base, and that's that that's a real a real nice technique. Um, now, but let's say, well, we don't want this thing to be totally solid, as it, right now it's completely solid. Uh, instead, let's say just we, we just wanted like a, a thin structure and not an entirely solid, because that, that's going to use a lot of filament if we do it that way. So what we can do is we can select, actually select this, this entire shape, and we can do a linear sketch pattern. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want a pattern. I want an offset entity. And um, we're going to do a, an inward offset of, let's say, two millimeters. Or maybe make it three. We want to want it to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more watertight. So now we have a hollow shape that we're going to extrude around the circle. Now, the way you can see it is you can change your view to be kind of a see-through view. So now, as you can see, we have this. This is a solid wall, but this is an air gap that goes all the way around. And what we have in the middle here is a location where we can screw in a garden hose as soon as we build the threads. So that's our next step. And to do that, we're going to go to the top plane. Uh, we're going to create uh, another 
another plane right here where we're going to start carving some threads. We'll call that 61.5. And we're going to do a similar thing that we did before with the threads below. So I'm going to start out with a circle here. And by the way, when you're doing this, you're always dealing with uh, geometry. I mean, you know, you, you need to have a good solid understanding of geometry, good spatial orientation, the ability to to visualize 3D space so that you, you know what you're doing. All right, so I have a circle here that's 12.2 millimeters uh, in diameter. And from that circle, I'm going to do uh, a helix again. But in this case, I'm going to reverse the helix to go downward. I'm going to change the pitch to 2.2 millimeters, which is the, that's the pitch of a garden hose. And I'm going to add um, revolutions, give it about six revolutions. So that's a helix that's going down into the object. Now all I have to do is build the uh, cut threads to cut the threads into the shape. And um, I'm just going to cut it up here. Uh, we're going to be cutting into the walls of this of this shape because uh, we're cutting a female thread pattern into this. So, well, actually, where do I want to start? I guess we'll start here. Oops, give me a line. Come on. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm probably gonna manually uh, edit these anyway, so I'm just gonna do a rough sketch on them right now. All right, so what we, I, I happen to know the numbers on this because I've done this so many times. So we want a 12.3. Uh, Let's go with the uh, 60 there. Minus 12.3 millimeters here. And uh, 58.005, we leave it a 5 thousandths of an inch uh, margin in between them. And then we're going to go uh, minus 13.9 millimeters on this point with uh, 59. So that's actually a, a good shape for for the threads. And you know, there's one thing that I kind of I should have done differently on this, and that is I want to actually extend this. Hold on a second. Oops. I want this shape, this helix. I'm, I'm sorry, this circle on top to be um, 12.3 instead of 12.2. Um, I like to give, see how the thread touches the, the, the edge of the helix now? And I like to do that because you don't want things to fit together 100%. You need to give them a little bit of space, a little bit of margin. And so now, of course, uh, all we're going to do is we're going to do a, a swept cut. And we're going to cut that triangle shape along this spiral and what we've done there is we have now created a female thread pattern and if I change the view here you can kind of see it in 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 3d a little huh? oh there's there's something that we forgot that I forgot <laughs> I'll show you that on our on our revolve sketch this point is in too too tight uh, we need to take that out to minus 12.3. That was actually covering up our threads. And we need to do the same here. Minus 12.3. Now that we do that, you will be able to actually see the threads. And there you go. So, uh, there you go. That's That's what the threads look like. Now, you notice that the threads are kind of, the cut doesn't go well. It kind of cuts into this um, this revolved shape that we made there. That's not good, right? So we simply edit that shape. And the way we can do that is, well, let's see what's the easiest way to do that. Um, simplest way is to just give yourself another line out, out this direction and uh, attach that on the same point and then trim out the line that you don't want. And so 
what you have at this point is you've got oops uh, apparently I have a oh I didn't the trim didn't work let's try it again there trim it okay and there you go so now you've got your shape and, and you don't have that problem and if you wanted to you could even well, actually let me zoom out to show you this it's kinda cool you can look underneath it and you can see the threads up there inside it and you can see the lower threads as well uh, now if you want to on this you can even do a, uh, a photo view add-in and you can do an integrated preview render of exactly what we're seeing so it's going to actually do a photorealistic render at this point to show us what this piece would look like uh, even as we're doing our designs and it, it's, it's pretty cool because you can rotate it around and it's going to give you a photorealistic look at your part and the pixelation you see is here it's not in the video it's actually because it's rendering this in real time at first it's it's strongly pixelated and then it 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 increases the resolution as it calculates it. And I can actually work with the piece um, using this integrated preview. And there are the threads that we built. Now this piece will allow you to, to attach a, a garden hose here and then the bottom will um, attach onto a mason jar. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that but if you did you could do it. And then you take this piece you just print it out on your 3D printer and uh, you're done. You've, you've, you've got your piece. So this is some of what I am doing as I'm designing all these various um, inventions that are going to be released on foodrising.org. Let me go back to the, the regular view. Um, th these are some of the geometries that, that, I'm, that I'm working with. One of the things you'll notice here, you see this, this angle? In a 3D printing environment, you can't print an overhang angle that is more than 45 degrees. For example, you could not, I'll just give you, I'll show you a quick example. Oops. <laughs> Let me try something different. Um, you could not have a shape such as this. I'll draw you a sample shape. You could not have a shape like this and expect it to print. Um, if you extrude it. This will not print because of this overhang here means the printer w would be trying to print in the air and it can't print in midair. So you can't have an angle like this. Uh, even if you tried to uh, do a revolve base with it, let's say. Let's give it, a, let's give it an axis here. Uh, It doesn't like the axis selection. Let me edit the sketch. Put it in a center line. It's not even in the center exactly, but good enough for this for this uh, demonstration. Uh, if we were to take this shape. There we go. And if we were to do a, a revolved extrusion, and you can see it better from underneath, uh, that shape will not print. So when you are dealing with um, the geometries of 3D objects in a 3D printing context, there are things you can do and there are things you cannot do. And one of them that you can't do is this. So this is a very uh, uh, strict and, and critical limitation that you need to understand if you are hoping to design objects for 3D printing. Um, so, actually, let me uh, remove that extrusion, and in fact, I'm going to I'm going to extrude it a different direction. Show you even like this. Even if you just do a standalone block like that, that won't print either. So there is a reason why I use this cone shape here 
which has roughly a 45 degree angle, that is printable. But many things that you first imagine are not printable. Uh, another example of that is you can't turn this entire object on its side and expect, right, let, let, me, let me show you that. Um, you can't turn this object on its side and expect to print this. If the shadow is your base, you won't be able to print this shape because what you have here is you have a, a, a negative space cylinder parallel to the x-axis. And uh, 3D printers cannot print those shapes with any kind of accuracy. They can do them when they're very, very small, such as one millimeter or a couple of millimeters. But to print a large cylinder, such as this entire cylinder here, to print this standing on its edge like that, it's impossible. It won't print. You get a big mess on your printer. So obviously you don't want to do that. You, you need to print from the, the z-axis and understand the strengths and limitations of 3D printing when you're designing the geometry for practical items, such as the ones that I'll be releasing on Food Rising. So check it all out on foodrising.org. This is where we will have the inventions uh, released. It's all a non-profit um, effort. And you can see some of the company's technologies that we're working with. We use Agilent Laboratory Instrumentation. We use Flash Forge printers right now, SolidWorks software. Um, and we're sharing many of these via open source. So check it out at foodrising.org. Subscribe to the email if you'd like to be alerted when we announce these really revolutionary objects that you'll be able to use in a practical context in your own life to create abundance and enhance the quality of your life. Thanks for listening. This is Mike Adams, the health ranger of foodrising.org.